Hello and welcome to Video Revealed. I'm Colin Smith. We're going to have a look at Source Patcher Presets in Adobe Premiere Pro. All right, source patching is the number one area that new users can run into trouble if something gets turned on or off. Well, the good thing is there are presets that you can create and save to make sure the right patching is turned on. I'll even show you how to use the built-in default one to make sure things are on. Once you save these presets, I'll show you where they're located and you can easily share them. All right, so here is our project. And you might be uh, used to these blue numbers and letters showing up. And on the right side, these are track targets. This typically has to do with how you're editing on the right, which clips will be edited, which things will be changed based on track targeting. One little tip about track targeting that if you don't have any track targeting on, uh, Premiere Pro will always try to use the top number, V1 or A1, if you're wondering why it makes decisions as it does sometimes. But let's get to source patching. That's on the other side. Over here, there's nothing there until we do something in the project uh, panel. We need to select something. So I'm gonna open up a music file, which is just audio, and watch what happens when I click on it. Source patching turns on, but it's not engaged. But even with that off, I can still drag audio in. Let's go look at a video clip that doesn't have audio. And when I drag that in, I can drag that in. The interesting thing is, if you just have video or audio, you can still drag in. The problem occurs when you have a clip that has both audio and video and you have one of these turned off. But watch what happens when I choose a clip that has both audio and video. I'm just going to patch the audio and watch what happens. I can't drag that in. So the problem occurs when you have a clip that has both audio and video, and one of those has been turned off. And I swear to God, I talked with Adobe and I said, sometimes those things get turned off and I didn't turn them off. They don't agree with me. They think you manually have to turn them off. I think they get turned off for whatever reason. But anyway, you need to turn them on. So what you can do, whoop, let's go back and select that clip with both. If this is turned off or it's in a different track, so here V1 will actually go on V2 and A1 will go on A4. If you right click here, you'll notice that there are presets. Here's the default source assignment. Watch what happens. I'll click on this. It goes back to V1 and A1. And that's the default. That's just a typical thing that most people will do. But of course, if you want more advanced controls, Maybe you're doing B-roll to V2, and you also want the B-roll audio to be A4. I can right-click and save that as a preset. I can name that. In my case, I'm gonna name this B-roll. And you can even assign keyboard shortcuts. So I can assign what the, the shortcut is here. I'll show you in keyboard shortcuts where you can assign each one of these assignments. But right now, just choose a preset. Click OK. My preset is done. So if I go back and select V1, A1, right click, B-roll, boom, there it is. And just to show you where those are, in your documents, both on Mac and Windows, Documents, Adobe, Premiere Pro, the version number, and your profile, in Settings and Source Patcher Presets, there it is. So you could easily copy that to the same location on another computer, and it's going to show up when you right click. So let's go look at, in the edit menu on Windows, the Premiere Pro menu on Mac, keyboard shortcuts. If you type in source assignment, you'll see there they are. Source assignment, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. So you can save these as uh, keyboard shortcuts uh, and it will quickly turn those on and off. And some people have really deep, you know, 50, 60 tracks in there, 
And uh, if you're always doing the same kind of thing, like putting something on track 49, instead of having to find it, you can leave it and just use the keyboard shortcut. I also want to show you another uh, file that has more than just one audio track and show you what happens here. So I'm going to go back to my default and this is a P2 clip that has four. So watch what happens when I click on it, all four are showing up. I don't have to use that. I can turn those off and you could save this as a preset. Maybe um, you only recorded dual mono on the, on the camera and you wanted to shut those other two off and you don't want to forget that. So you could save this as a camera interview and it would make sure that those other two are shut off. And you can just save that as another preset and call that P2 all and now it's all going to come on. But what happens, what if we choose something with only, with only one audio track, uh, the P2 all, it makes no difference because I can't select more than I have. So there you go. That's a little bit about source patching. And if you're a more advanced user, a little bit about source patching presets, which can make uh, things move a lot easier. Hopefully you found that uh, informative. If you want to, take a moment and subscribe. We appreciate that uh, anytime. Till next time, I'm Colin Smith and it's my job to look at those little blue flashy things uh, inside Premiere Pro and, and get a little deeper into the manual and let you know that you can make your life easier by saving presets.